Can math save your blood sugars? Today in the episode, we're talking about type 1 diabetes math, how it can lead you into more freedom and flexibility with your life with diabetes, an odd story that's going to shock you, but also lead you into this incredible epiphany that we had recently, uh, and some fun stories along the way. So without any further ado, let's get into our theme song first, and then we'll jump into it. I've spent the last 10 years pushing the limits while identifying trends and patterns in my type 1 diabetes management. Follow along as I learn, apply, and share the fitness, nutrition, and lifestyle strategies that I've learned from diabetes experts around the world. The real question is, how can we live fearlessly with diabetes while maintaining stable blood sugars? This podcast is here to give you the answer. My name is Matt Vandevecht, head coach and co-founder of FTF Warrior, and welcome to Part of My Pancreas. So ironically, growing up for myself, I hated math. Uh, I hated a number of things in school. <laughs> I was not the most studious of people, but that's also because I didn't recognize my passions just yet. Now I obviously study a lot of diabetes, science, kinesiology, and that's where my passions lie with science. But within the math world, not so much. I even struggled a little bit to get some of the concepts initially while I was in college. Now, within math, though, obviously many, if not all of us, have learned the basics of math, some further along that road than others. But I want you to imagine for a second, you didn't learn math, like math just wasn't taught to you. Maybe you just skipped that class and you never went back. <laughs> so now flat, fast forward years and years later, you're trying to get through life without math. Could you do it? Well, the answer in short is yes, you could survive without math, but it would be incredibly difficult, right? So I'm actually grateful that they forced me to you know, get my head down and just focus on figuring out all these mathematical equations. Uh, of course, now my life is surrounded by math, uh, albeit diabetes math, but <laughs> it's the same nonetheless. But with uh, a life lived without math, what would that look like, right? Let's imagine for a second, you were going into a grocery store, you gather a few items for dinner, you head to the checkout, and they tell you, hey, uh, the total is 1872. And you're like, cool, I have no idea what those numbers mean, because I never learned math, right? So 1872, you pull out a piece of paper out of your wallet or your purse. Uh, does Is this enough? And it's a $10 bill, but you don't know that because you never learned math, right? And they go, uh, no, okay, okay, no problem. You put it back in, you grab another paper bill out of your your coin purse, wallet, whatever purse, you hand it over, it's a $5 bill. Is this enough? You go, no, that's, uh, that's actually less <laughs> than the first one you showed me. You go, okay, no worries. You put it back in, you grab another one, a 20, hand it to them. Is this enough? Oh, yes, that is. Okay, great, right? Took three tries, but we got there, we survived, and we get to purchase our groceries now. So yes, the answer in short is that you would survive, you could get by without understanding math, but you'd have a lot of obstacles in your day to day life, it would be frustrating and difficult to get through even a simple grocery store trip, right? So what we can see is that yes, math is useful, it was is probably difficult for most of us initially to learn whether it was you know, the basic algebra or you got to stats can calculus up in college, right? But the point is, without math, life is more difficult, though, if you go through the difficulty of learning the math, life gets easier. And of course, if you were forced to live life without math, yes, you could go to the grocery store. And, you know, because we probably eat similar foods on the grocery trips that we go to, you'd start to get an idea for like, oh, the the piece of paper with this president's face on it means uh, a chicken sandwich <laughs> and this paper with this president's face on it means I can purchase eggs for the week, right? And you'd probably start to figure out some correlation there, but it means that you'd be locked into that specific schedule of eating at specific menu. And it'd be difficult for you to go out and explore new cuisine or even go to a restaurant, right? Uh, you'd end up tipping $200 because you don't know <laughs> and then you make someone else's night. But the idea behind it is, yes, you'd survive, but you get locked in to this one specific way of living because you'd have to learn kind of an exchange system of like, this bill means that, but I don't know what else that bill could get me. You know, yes, $10 is eggs plus bananas plus pancake mix, but $10 could also be, um, you know, a bag of fruits and vegetables. $10 could also be five Big Macs or however many, I don't know how much those cost. It's been a while, sorry. Uh, but $10 can do a variety of things, but if you don't know the math behind it, you don't understand those values, then it's very difficult to use it to its fullest potential and to have that flexibility and freedom within your life. See, similarly with diabetes, 
we've got this diabetes math that we have to understand, right? Now on day one, you learn the basics, the, the fundamental principles. I have to take insulin for the food that I eat. Now, depending on your doctor, your medical team, uh, and the extent to which they trained you, you might have learned about the exchange system, which is kind of like, you know, the I know the face of the president on the bill that means I get to buy eggs and bananas, right? Versus insulin to carb ratio, where you start to understand, hey, different numbers on these pieces of paper mean I can buy different amounts of food. Similarly, like, okay, different amounts of insulin means different amounts and types of foods, right? There's some math behind that. And we start learning about ratios and rates at basal versus bolus versus correction factor. And it really allows us to build in more flexibility with our lives. Now, when we first started discussing the insulin to carb ratio, it allowed us more freedom, but it also gave us more homework, right? More work up front, you have to learn about the insulin to carb ratio. And you also have to understand that that ratio is not a set it and forget it kind of thing. It's not the same for the rest of your life. In fact, there's a number of different uh, variables that are gonna impact how much insulin you need on a daily basis. You look at different dietary changes, different levels of activity, different hormonal shifts, your sleep amount, your stress, your hydration, the temperature outside. We could go down a whole laundry list of reasons that your blood sugars are gonna fluctuate. You'll need differing amounts of insulin. And if you only understand X amount of insulin for X type of meal, you're going to have crazy blood sugars, right? It's not going to work every single day. And if even if it does work every single day, you're still going to be locked in to that specific meal, that specific lifestyle, because you didn't learn the math behind the equation, right? It's only when you start to understand what causes blood sugars to go up and down, you learn about the math behind it. You know, why do I take one unit of insulin per 10 grams of carbs? Right. And I know like half the people watching this were like, oh, how did you know my insulin to carb ratio? It's that's where just about everybody gets started off. It's kind of a generalized insulin to carb ratio. It's where I got started off as well. Uh, but when you start to understand the different factors that impact insulin sensitivity versus insulin resistance and how these can fluctuate even on a day to day basis. Now you're able to manipulate your blood sugars based on the different factors and variables that are present. Right. So if you go to the grocery store and you buy the eggs, the bananas and the protein powder, cake mix, whatever, and you're hungry, you know, oh, man, I wanted to get an extra sandwich, but I don't know how to do the math with my money to know which of the bills I have to give them to pay for the sandwich as well. Right. And so you're stuck. Well, I guess I just can't eat that food. Oh, man, you know how many times I've been I've heard people say, oh, I just I can't have that as much as we love to say, oh, you can't tell us what we can and can't eat. There's rules that most of us abide by internally. We're like, mm, I don't know if I want to risk eating that, right? Like that's, that's one of those difficult foods. I, I just don't want to put my blood sugars under that much risk, that much stress. But the problem is it's not risky if you know the math, right? If you understand how blood sugars work, if they go up and down, you can have the fruit smoothie. You can have the birthday cake. You can have pizza. It's crazy, right? You can have it though. You can go have Italian food, Mexican food, all the cuisines of the world. They're all possible, but you gotta know your numbers. You have to understand the diabetes math. And when you do understand diabetes math, you open up the floodgates for that flexibility and freedom with your blood sugars. So really we've got three different levels to this thing, right? First is that you never learned math and you don't care to, and you're guessing on everything, right? Maybe this was an exchange system taught to you 10, 20, 30 plus years ago. And you're like, oh, this is just what I was taught with diabetes. This is what works. And so it's fine, right? Uh, but it's not fine because you know that your blood sugars are up and down all day long, or maybe they're just stuck high or stuck low. It's less than what you would wish for with your blood sugars. You don't feel your best, right? So step one or stage one is you've never learned math and you don't really care to. Stage two is you've never learned math, but you've learned correlation, right? You see that if I do A, B usually happens. But the issue with that, as we learned in the grocery store example, is you end up getting locked into the same routines, the same lifestyle bits every single day. There's no flexibility, there's no freedom, and you've now sacrificed quality of life in order to achieve stable blood sugars because you know, oh, if I eat the same type of food every single day, or if I restrict the same types of foods every single day, or if I live in this box that's surrounded by diabetes, then I can have stable blood sugars and I'll be okay, right? but quality of life suffers. Then you have stage three, which is I learned math 
and I'm staying curious, right? I'm learning about what factors are impacting my blood sugars. You know, how does my insulin to carb ratio shift? Is my insulin to carb ratio correct or is it wrong in the first place? Maybe that's what's causing all of the fluctuations and ridiculous A1Cs and time and range numbers. You know, maybe the basal is off. Maybe uh, my activity level, because I, I recently started trying to lose weight, has shifted my insulin needs. Like there's so many different things that that stage three person goes, huh, I wonder, and then the whole world is yours, right? If you're curious about this stuff and you're open to learning new strategies, well, now you're learning about math in the first place, but also how it impacts you and your life. And that's what's gonna open up your possibilities into controlled blood sugars, but also the higher quality of life where you get to do what you want, feel what you want, eat what you want, and be what you want. See, and this is where you start to actually have fun with life, right? Where you're like, oh yeah, I can go have pizza. Thanks for inviting me, friends. Oh yeah, I can go to Disneyland for a day. That walking for 12 hours straight, that doesn't scare me because I know my diabetes math, right? I know the numbers, I understand my formulas. And this is why we preach formulas all the time, right? All the freaking time, because it boils down to formulas. It's numbers, it's diabetes math. If you can understand how diabetes is a math equation, because the entirety of diabetes as a condition is math. And it kind of kills me a little bit to say that because like I said, math was not my, my chosen topic. It wasn't my favorite. But understanding these principles, these concepts has enabled me to live my best life. Go mountain biking, eat pizza. I always forgot to do this, but I remembered this time. Hit this kind of time and range, right? This is my last week. Every week I do this, I show you guys where we're at so you can see the reality of what it looks like to use blood sugar formulas, right? To lay out the numbers. 95% time and range. As you can see there, it also says this is no change from the previous week because the previous week I was also 95% time and range. Week after week, month after month, year after year, 90 percentages, they do not stop because I use the formulas and I know my diabetes math and you can too. Uh, good news too is that diabetes math is not as difficult, at least it wasn't for me, than actual math, <laughs> learning about calculus and pre-calc and statistics and all that crap. Those are important too, obviously for different reasons, but diabetes math is quite simple if you have the right methods that you're using. This is why we use formulas. This is why we go back over data and analytics. If you can understand that, diabetes smooths out, it simplifies, you get your quality of life back and your blood sugars cooperate. I've been in range 100% for days on end without a worry. This is what is possible if, and only if, you understand your diabetes math. You gotta put the work in to learn the math, but once you do, you get to buy whatever groceries you want. <laughs> you got full flexibility, use that money in your own, in your own methods, right? Uh, and that's the whole concept I wanna share with you guys today. Yes, you can skate by, you can get by without knowing your diabetes math. You'll survive probably, right? But who wants to survive when the option to thrive is present. And that's what we're after. So if you're somebody who's like, I, I'm ready for thriving. I, I understand that there is an equation to learn. I have to learn about my diabetes if I expect to take care of it. Well, we got a ton of resources for you. If you haven't already yet, hit the subscribe button on this, uh, this episode. Make sure you are subscribed. We put these out weekly. Uh, you got hundreds of videos, hundreds of audio files, tons of resources all over the place. But if you want to go direct to the source, we're actually going to be talking about diabetes math specifically in our newsletter subscription. Now, this is going out every month. It's a physical newsletter, so you do have to tell us where to ship it to so I can send it to your doorstep. Uh, but we're going to be going over these diabetes math concepts and break them down. Obviously, there's more than just a one sentence answer for the diabetes math realm. But if you want to see what it looks like to break down diabetes math, understand your numbers on a deeper level. And, uh, and if you're truly ready to thrive, with your diabetes, then you got to go tell us where to ship your newsletter. You go to renegadenewsletter.com. That's called Renegade Newsletter. It's actually called the Renegade Warriors Newsletter because we are renegades. We're different, right? We understand that it's not just about throwing insulin at high blood sugars and throwing glucose at low blood sugars. There's a balance. There's an equation. There are formulas behind this thing. So if you want to understand diabetes math on a deeper level, watch me break it down into these digestible, <laughs> no pun intended, but digestible pieces that makes it easier and simpler to understand and implement 
you got to jump over there real quick before we ship out the next issue go to renegadenewsletter.com by far the cheapest resource out there that's going to give you the biggest bang for your buck direct access to our secrets it's what's working for myself how i got that 95 percent time and range as well as what's working for our high level clients as well sharing their insiders tips their strategies all right so um hopefully this one was helpful for you understand your diabetes math doesn't sound super fun but i promise you if you put the work in now to understand your diabetes math life gets more fun you get more stable blood sugars while doing the things that you love and that's what i want for you i don't want you to feel held back by this disease but rather get your life back you deserve it all right so go grab your copy uh, before the next issue ships out quick go over to renegadenewsletter.com i'll be breaking down that diabetes math and really diving into the details there it's my specialty it's what i love to do and i uh, hope you have a fantastic rest of your day i'll catch you next week oh just one second one second uh, i actually just jumped back into the recording studio because i thought of a really fun idea for you guys uh so i actually just went and changed the website so for anybody who goes and activates your subscription to the renegade warriors newsletter which is renegadenewsletter.com uh, i just changed the website so once you activate it you're actually gonna get free access to two trainings to help you implement and actually get all the tools you need to thrive with your diabetes so the first one's going to go over our formula that we use that i use it's called the 80 20 blood sugar formula a free video that i've included on uh, your confirmation page and the second video i'm actually going to email you it's going to be a surprise one that i handpicked for you i think is going to be really helpful so uh, go ahead activate your subscription grab those two free videos on me i just changed the website so they are there for this week only if you go ahead and jump in there i hope you enjoy it and uh, be sure to actually use it it's going to make some big changes in your life that are for the best all right so uh again hope you enjoyed today head over to renegadenewsletter.com and i'll catch you guys in the next episode keep up the fight